I'm just struck by the the chaos, confusion, um, dysfunction uh, of the Republican conference. They defended putting him on committees, and now they're announcing that he's not going to serve on a committee. So I just don't I don't understand what the the play of the day is. The chronicles of George Santos are truly never ending. So you know, like literally every aspect of his lie, he lied about. Like if he had a coffee or tea this morning, what school he went to, who his parents were, what color his shoes are, even though you're looking at them right now, he'll tell you they're red even though they're blue. That's the type of lying. That's the level of lying George Santos is on. We know this. But you know. The details just keep on coming out, so we're just going to keep on going over them. So now, apparently, several of his donors appear to not even exist after an investigation by Mother Jones, so let's read. In September 2020, George Santos' congressional campaign reported that Victoria, that Victoria and Jonathan Reger had each contributed $2,800, the maximum amount, to his first bid for a house seat. A search of various databases reveals no one in the United States named Victoria or Jonathan Reger. Moreover, there is nobody by any name living at 45 New Mexico Street in Jackson. That address doesn't exist. There is a New Mexico Street in Jackson, but the numbers end in the 20s, according to Google Maps and a resident of the street. <sighs> George Santos is not fit to serve. Uh, on any committees. But wait, 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 there's more from Mother Jones. Santos's 2020 campaign finance reports also list a donor named Steven Berger as a $2,500 donor and said he was a retiree who lived in Brant Road in Raleigh, California. But a spokesperson for William Brant, a prominent rancher and Republican donor, tells Mother Jones that Brant has lived at that address for at least 20 years and neither he or his wife, the only other occupant at the Brant home, Road home, have made any donations to George Santos. He does not know Steven Berger, nor has Steven Berger ever lived at Brent Road. This dude really, truly, honestly lives in another world. And it, it, because every stone you flip over, oh, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. But one of the things that I pointed out in my last Kevin McCarthy video, actually, because Kevin McCarthy was completely unwilling to condemn George Santos on national media. And it's like, y'all are going to go through trying to impeach Joe Biden, doing all these investigations, but you won't even throw out this guy. Come on. Clearly, uh, George Santos has some has some issues and concerns, and uh, this is likely the outcome of his meeting with uh, with the speaker. Well, one of the most important things that you really got to realize about George Santos is that we're going to be hearing about him for a long time. I mean, unless he goes to jail for years and years, which doesn't particularly look like that's going to happen or like there's any charges against him that's going to land him in jail for years. He's going to stay in the media. He loves the attention and hates it at the same time. But more than anything, he loves it because he's getting the attention. And he's so ridiculous that people can't help but talk about him. I mean, literally everything about him is a lie. He probably don't even need glasses, but he wears those glasses. You know, so he's going to take advantage of that. He's going to keep talking. Even if he gets kicked out of office, he's going to keep on talking and he's going to have a fan base basically who just loves to tune in and laugh at him. So, you know, while this is a tragedy for America, I guess at some level, it's good news for George Santos.